Hi everyone, today I'm going to give you an overview on how to use the Avaya Agent for Desktop version 2.0. This assumes that your system administrator has pre-configured your station and provided you with your login information. When you first open your Avaya Agent for Desktop application, you will see two windows, the Avaya Agent Login window and your Avaya Agent for Desktop soft phone. To start using your soft phone, you will first need to log in using the Avaya Agent Login window. Under Station, on the Use for Audio drop-down menu, choose My Computer to use the soft phone as an IP station. Under Station ID, enter your extension number and under Password, type in your password. If you want to automatically log in to your extension when you open your application, checkmark the Automatic Sign-in box. Under Agent, type in your Agent ID in the Agent ID text box and if you have a password, type it in or else leave the password field blank. If you don't know whether to use a password or not, check with your system administrator. Please note that if your organization is using Avaya Contact Center Control Manager, these settings might be pre-configured for you. Before we log into the station, I want you to notice that when you are logged out of the station, the soft phone is grayed out. We are going to sign into our station by clicking on the station sign in button. Once logged in, you will notice that the color of the handset icons change from gray to green. We're going to check our audio settings by accessing the settings menu. There are two ways to access the settings menu. The first method is by clicking on the application drop down menu, then select settings. The second method is by clicking on the icon settings under the Avaya Agent Login window. Once you have your settings window open, select Audio. Here you have your audio output which is designated for your microphone, your ringer output which is your phone ringer, and your audio input which is designated for your headset. Each selection has a drop-down menu for the audio devices it automatically discovers upon application startup. In my example, the application has discovered my laptop audio and my Plantronics headset. Once I've chosen the device I want to use, I can test the audio. I advise you to experiment with these settings until you're satisfied with your audio quality. If you look at the upper left hand corner, you will notice that my agent state says offline and that's because I haven't logged in as an agent. Next, I'm going to log in as an agent and there are two methods of doing this. The first method is by using the Avaya agent login window and under agent, click on sign in. This will automatically sign you in and the Avaya Agent Login window will automatically close after both your station and Agent ID are signed in. If you look at the upper left hand corner, you will notice that my agent state has changed from offline to aux mode. The other method of logging in as an agent is using your feature button. Click on Login and use your dialpad to enter your Agent ID. If you have a password configured, you will need to enter your agent ID, then your password. Once logged in, your agent state should change from offline to aux. Using your Avaya agent login window is definitely faster. Once I'm ready to take a call, I'm going to click on my feature button widget. Then I'm going to click on auto in. And this will put me in a ready state so that I can start receiving calls. If I want to put myself back in aux mode, I can click on the aux work button. Type in my recent code. And press enter or click on the green check mark. If it's the end of my shift and I'm ready to log out, under the Features button, click on Logout, or I can click on the Application drop-down menu and click on Agent Logout. 
I have my station configured with consultative transfer and this gives me the opportunity to check the transfer number that I'm transferring this person to before I make the transfer or I can even talk to the person I'm transferring this call to before I transfer the call. This setting is not active by default and you have to turn it on. To turn on consultative transfer, go to settings, preferences, scroll down to transfer, and put a check mark next to use consultative type of transfer. Also, put a check mark on use consultative type of conference to have the same type of feature when conferencing a call. Then click save. To make an outbound call, choose one of your line appearances and type in the telephone number or extension number in the text box. And when ready, click on the green telephone handset or press enter on your keyboard. To place a call on hold, click on the orange pause button. To resume the call, click on the orange play button. If you would like to transfer a call, while your call is active, click on the upside down handset with the arrow. This will initiate the transfer. Type your transfer number, then click on the green handset with the arrow or press enter on your keyboard. This will activate your line 2 appearance and when ready click on the green handset or the red handset to complete the transfer. To conference a call, while you're on the call, click on the icon with the plus sign, type in your number, then click on the green icon or press enter on your keyboard. Once my caller is on the other line, I'm going to click on the green icon with a check mark to conference the call. Once the calls are conferenced, the line appearance state changes from active call to conference call. If you click on the drop down menu, you have the option to drop your last participant. If you happen to be in a call with an IVR or some kind of menu option call, you can use the dial pad to enter your DTMF digits but this will require you to use your mouse or you can click on the DTMF tones icon which is the icon with the pound sign. This will allow you to use your keyboard while you type your DTMF tones. To hang up on a call, just hit the red handset. The Avaya Agent for Desktop provides 7 available widgets and they are located in our widget bar. The last icon is our voicemail button, not a widget, and we will go over that function at the end. My first widget is my contact list. Here you can create contacts by clicking on the plus sign. Type in your contact information. Please note that the manner in how you enter the telephone digits will depend on how your dialing rules are configured by your system administrator. If you want to make this contact a favorite, put a check mark next to favorite and same thing for the speed dial. Then click on save. We have now added a new contact and the orange star means that this is a favorite contact and the blue phone next to the star means that this number is programmed as a speed dial. Because we have programmed this number as a speed dial, on my line appearance, I can click on the phone number drop down menu and dial the number from there. Since I didn't make the mobile number a speed dial, I only see the work phone on the drop down menu. On the right hand side, you have three little dots and if you click on them, it gives you option to edit or delete your contact. You can also right click on the highlighted number to edit or delete your contact or you can double click 
on the name to edit the contact. On the bottom right hand corner, you can filter your contacts by favorite or speed dials. And on the left hand corner, you can search your contacts by name or phone number. The next widget is the call history log. This log contains all of your incoming and outgoing calls. On the bottom right hand corner, you can filter calls based on date. And on the left hand corner, you can search through your call by name or telephone number. You can also delete your telephone numbers by highlighting the record you want to delete. Right click your mouse and click delete. Then click yes to delete. You can also highlight all your records by typing control A you can delete your entire call log. The next widget is our feature buttons and this displays all of the telephone buttons your system administrator has pre-configured for you such as your login, logout, aux work button and so on. Our next widget is the dial pad. This allows you to use your mouse to insert digits. Then we have the stat console widget and this is a cool new way that Avaya allows you to monitor your cues within your soft phone. This feature is not new, it's based on cue call buttons or view display buttons that have existed a long time, but the way it integrates to the Avaya agent for desktop phone, it really enhances the user experience. It makes it easy to monitor your cues. By clicking on one of my cue call buttons, it gives me a nice visual display of all the calls that I have in queue and the time the callers have been waiting in queue. And I can have multiple queue call buttons so that I can monitor multiple queues. The next widget is the call quality details, which is useful information to have when you are experiencing call quality issues. Then you have an internal browser. And finally, if you have a voicemail, you can program a voicemail button the parameter is located under settings, preferences, scroll down to message waiting indicator and make sure the message waiting indicator box is checked then type in your voicemail number or the voicemail access number then click on save. Once it's programmed this icon will appear and it serves two purposes. First the icon will light up when you have a voicemail message. Second you can click on this icon and it will connect you to your voicemail giving you easy access to your voicemail. The area where your widgets are located that is called your workspace and you are able to customize your workspace. You can close the widgets you don't want. You are also able to rearrange your widgets by clicking on your widget and dragging it and placing it on top of the area where you want to have your widget located. You can also click and drag your widgets and float them. You can also rearrange your floating widgets. You're also able to combine your widgets on your workspace by clicking on the name of your widget, dragging it over your workspace. Once you drag your widget over your workspace, you'll see blue boxes light up, move your widget and place your mouse over the box where you want to drop your widget. The box is going to light up in a light shade of blue. When ready, drop your widget. I'm going to do the same thing for the dial pad. I want my dial pad on the right side of my feature buttons. So I'm going to click on the name of my widget. I'm going to drag my widget over my workspace. Then I'm going to put my mouse over the right box once it's highlighted in the light shade of blue, I'm going to drop my widget. And this will put my dial pad widget on the right hand side of my workspace. And you can continue this process until you have customized your widget workspace in the manner which is more comfortable to you. Once you're done customizing your workspace, you can save it by clicking on the application drop down menu, navigate to workspace, then navigate to Save Workspace As and click on Save Workspace As New. And then you can name your workspace and click Yes to Save. 
If for some reason you would like to reset your workspace back to default, you can go back to the application menu, navigate to workspace, click on load workspace, then choose basic. If you want to delete your save workspace, navigate to application, workspace, manage workspace, test workspace, and click on remove then click on yes to remove your workspace. That's it for today. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope you found it helpful.